Welcome to the Philly Sports Dish. We are here for another week, a busy, busy week in sports. I'm the one and only Big Game Dame with my main man, Do. What's going on? We are here, and it has been a crazy week in sports, to say the least. Yes. So, you know what? Let's let's just get into it. Let's not waste any time. Let's start off. We're going to go national before we go into the Philadelphia stuff. Okay. NBA free agency. Yes. What a week. What a week. Um... Let me just get your overall reaction. Just what what are some things that really stood out to you that happened? Uh, what, what stood out to me most is the Miami Heat. Uh, yeah, I think they definitely won free agency. I love the moves they made. Uh, PJ Tucker, the the sign and trade with Lowry. Um, yeah, they they may have leapfrogged the Sixers. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Has the balance of power? I don't really. Has the we'll put it this way, has the balance of power shifted in the East? Is it do we reshuffle the top teams now? Um, I don't know if reshuffle is the word. I think is Brooklyn clearly is still the top dog. And then I think the um the next three, Milwaukee, Philly, Miami, you know, somewhere that they're gonna finish two, three, four. So but I, I still think Brooklyn is clearly the standard. Yeah, and I'll have a follow-up question for you in a second about where the Sixers fit in and all this. But mm-hmm. anything else? That's- uh, of course, the Lakers. Yeah, you know, we got to uh, talk about the Lakers. Yeah, I, I think yeah, a couple yeah. weeks ago we talked about this when mm-hmm. we were talking about the Sixers, and I was like, the Lakers aren't going to stay in pack. Yeah. You know the Lakers are going to make moves. So your reaction to what the Lakers did? Um, believe it or not, I'm not as giddy as everybody else. I don't think, you know, go ahead and give them the ring or – yeah, you know, Lakers yeah. fans get themselves the championship yeah. every year. So I, I don't think, you know, Malik Monk is going to take you over the top or whatever. <laughs> but th- what they did was great. Like, they made a lot of good moves. They're, they're definitely uh, one of the few teams that should be having championship aspirations. So I'll put it like this. They're better now than they were at the end of last season. I remember we were talking about star power. Mm. Star power, and that's what wins. That's what gets over in the NBA. And, you know, that's one of the things I think you saw with free agency is everybody star shopping. Yes. Except for one team. We'll talk about that in a second. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Um, Yeah, free agency. It was just – it was a whirlwind. It was like every five minutes it seemed like somebody was signing – Talk about being surprised. Norman Powell, ninety million from Portland, yeah. five years. I was like, "Yo, I get my son a basketball now, man." No, just, just, hey, Norman, any, you got your money, but man, anybody named Norman Powell making ninety million dollars, I'm like, "Yo, <laughs> for real." <laughs> Gary Trent Jr. got fifty million, I believe, for, uh, Toronto. I mean, the numbers that were going out day one was just. It was mind boggling. Yeah, because and it's because in the NBA you star hunt, so mm-hmm. even these guys that have potential. They're locking them up. You don't want to lose them. Um, and that kind of gets me into, mm-hmm. let's go there. Yes, yeah, the Philadelphia 76ers. 76ers. <laughs> the Philadelphia 76ers. Okay. Star hunting. Mm-hmm. Not really. Listen, I'm going to surprise you. I'm not upset. With the Sixers free agency so far. The running back uh, looks like it's running back yeah, right now. Here's what I would say to the people who are upset or who feel deflated or disappointed so far in Sixers free agency. I would ask them, who did you want? Who was the person that you wanted the Sixers to get that they didn't? I'll speak for myself. It was two players that I had my eye on that the Sixers didn't get either, which was P.J. Tucker. He went to Miami. I mean, I can understand that. Mm-hmm. And Patty Mills, who ended up going to Brooklyn. Well, I can understand that. So I don't feel like, you know, Morey lost them to non-contenders. Like, you know, Miami and Brooklyn has a lot to offer. Mm-hmm. There's no shame in losing free agents to them. So besides that, um, I wasn't really um, desperate for Kyle Lowry. I mean, I would have took him, yeah. you know, but it wasn't like, oh, man, it's Kyle Lowry or bust. Because for me, Kyle Lowry meant no Lillard. Now, yeah. we may not, we still may not get him, but I feel like that would have closed the door on that. So for me, this is what I say to Sixers fan. Who, who, who was it that you wanted? Like, why are you so upset? Why are you disappointed in free agency? That, that's what I want to know. Yeah, for me, it's like the Sixers are, are at, they're at a crossroads mm-hmm. right now where they're standing on the edge of a the knife. They can either walk and be safe or they can fall and cut themselves and mm-hmm. be done. Okay. Um, they have to make the right move. 
And a lot of it, honestly, is psychological with their stars. You know, we talked about star hunting earlier. Mm -hmm. For me personally, they have stars. But it's the sight. They can't get over that hump psychologically. Mm -hmm. And that leads me to Ben Simmons. You know, we talked about this earlier. Um, so let's go there to Bleacher Report about him just cutting communication off. Mm -hmm. You know, Bleacher Report um, reported that today, that Ben Simmons has cut off communication with the Sixers. Golden State is where he wants to go. Mm -hmm. Your reaction to that? I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. If you sit back and think about it, it makes sense. He's being emotional now. The, the Sixers had an emotional reaction after game seven. They did some things that I believe in hindsight they wish they didn't, wouldn't, would not have done. Let's be specific for those who aren't sure. What, what um, specifically do you think they Doc did? Doc Rivers turn? and MB had negative comments about Ben Simmons at the post game press conference mm -hmm. after game seven. Rule number one is you, you don't do that. You got to protect him, no matter how frustrated you, you are. You don't do that. And he's allowed to be upset about that. He has a right to be upset because he hasn't thrown Doc Rivers under the bus. He hasn't thrown Embiid under the bus. And even though Embiid threw himself under the bus also, you, you, it's the certain things you don't do. So is Ben Simmons being mature? I think most people would say no. But is he being emotional and he has a right to be emotional right now? Absolutely. Absolutely. When you when, when the best player on the team throws you under the bus, when the coach says, I don't know if we can win with him playing point guard, me personally, if he didn't respond this way, I would be a little upset. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing because, you know, after – what. And it's, it hasn't just been this playoffs. It's been every playoffs mm -hmm. that he's been in. And, you know, they're expressing their frustration. He expresses, obviously, he's expressing his frustration by not even communicating mm -hmm. with them. Okay? So can this be saved? We talked about this earlier, but now mm -hmm. with these reports coming out about the lack of, yes. can it be saved? Absolutely it can be saved. And after reading the Bleacher Report, I'm more. I, I want him back even more now. It shows you anger. It shows you fire. Yeah, I I think you know this is it. If if he don't come back angry, as you said, with fire, like okay, this is what y'all think, then it's over. Like yeah. it, it is what it is. And and honestly, to piggyback off the free agency thing and the Sixers where they're at in the pecking order, you alluded to that you think they have stars. For them to challenge Brooklyn, Milwaukee, and Miami. One or two things have to happen. Ben Simmons has to take that leap or the people that they get in the trade has to be able to put the Sixers over the top. Yeah. Though, though, that's the only way the Sixers can get out the East. Yeah. And it's it, I, when I said, like, it's a lot of it is psychological. Mm -hmm. What I mean is, and we talked about that killer instinct, you mm -hmm. know, that those great NBA players have. Do the Sixers have stars? Yes. The question is, do they have superstars? And that intangible, that next level is what makes you a superstar. That killer mentality. And B likes to have fun. Kobe had fun on the court. Dame Lillard has fun on the court. But they look at it as fun as I'm going to squeeze every bit of life out of this other team. And what's the big difference? We talked about this before where you don't have veteran leadership. So maybe if you brought a veteran in here when and B and Simmons was a little bit younger, and B doesn't make that mistake at the podium. And B doesn't do that because he had a veteran in here that said, look, this is the way you handle things. This is how you treat your teammates. You never air your, your, your dirty laundry out. But because, you know, and B didn't have that because, the, you know, they tanked to the 10th degree. Mm -hmm. Now he he's just basically learning it on his own. And I'm pretty sure, according to the reports, MB wish he could have took it back. And I, mm -hmm. I've heard that he's actually tried to reach out to Ben Simmons. But at the end of the day, this is when, you know, if you had a, like I said, a Danny Green and Dwight Howard when MB was younger, then maybe you don't have this misstep. Yeah, or a few, two or three years ago, if you had someone like Jimmy Butler, that would have been perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what do I know? What do I know? Sixer season is actually around the corner, the NBA because of, uh, you know, the pandemic. Um, I just don't know. Listen. Like, I, I, at this point, I don't know with this franchise. I, I know people are going to be disappointed if they run it back. I know a lot of people want Ben Simmons gone. 
this is what's going to happen. If they stay status quo, the regular season is going to mean nothing to the Sixers. Everybody's yeah, just going to wait to the playoffs. So, but like I said, I wouldn't. I'm not disappointed if he comes back. Yeah, and at this point, like you said, what can you actually do? I think the Sixers fan base, the Sixers players, everyone has emotions. You have to remove your emotions from this situation. The only emotion right now should be those players and anger and wanting to get back on that court and saying, we're going to play angry, we're going to play with a chip on our shoulder all year, and we're going to get this done. We're going to take that next step. We're going to be killers out on the court. Joel, you got to stop having fun. And start wanting to rip somebody's throat out, you know. And Ben, same thing. Too cool for school, my opinion. Mm-hmm. All right, bring on angry Ben. Yeah, though. angry. You <laughs> see how I'm firing up Sixers? That's how you should be fire. Okay. Now, speaking of fire, let's go. To, uh, let's transition to Philadelphia's other team that people are talking about right now. Training okay. camp, the Philadelphia Eagles. Last week, we talked about the offense, and we went into a lot of detail player by player, but that's because there's so much turnover on the offensive side. Right. Not as much turnover, a couple of free agent signings, a couple of pickups, um, a couple of one-year deals, mm-hmm. but the defense seems like they're more set up and experienced, so we're going to structure this by unit, okay? Okay. So last year, I think the Eagles were like fifth-ranked defensive line. Mm-hmm. Their defensive line actually is ranked pretty well consistently all year. How is this defensive line looking to you? Um, it looks good. The, the problem I have, and I think the problem that they always have, is it's a lack of depth. And once you lose one of those starters to the inevitable injury, then that's when they start to get exposed. But if those guys can stay healthy, I think, yeah, they're a top five, definitely a top ten defensive line in the NFL. They have um, with Graham, who's – Always underrated, but he always seems to get it, you know, make impacts. Um, the young guy Sweat is coming on good. Barnett's in a contract year, so hopefully he steps it up. Fletcher Cox, arguably the second best D tackle in, fo- in football. So the problem is there's nothing behind that. Yeah, the health. Yeah, so the health factor comes in. And as we know here, like it's just something in the water. You just you can't stay healthy. So yeah, may, I don't know. Maybe new coach. Maybe. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> That's how I want them to go back to the Kelly Green. They didn't get banged up this bad. When they were. <laughs> midnight Green, is just, you just get injured wearing Midnight Green or something. But it's just, I like Sweat. Mm-hmm. I think this is this is going to be his breakthrough year. I love how he, like, you know, like, just how his, his motor. You can just tell. Mm-hmm. You know, you can just tell. Guy. And it takes these guys, these pass rushers, sometimes a couple years to come on. Look at Brandon Graham. Yeah. So I think Sweat, this might be his breakthrough year. Um, are there any of the young guys on the defensive line that kind of stick out to you, or is it just no? No, they're just I'm I'm waiting. Hopefully, because of you know the track record of the veterans, maybe these one of these young guys can step up and surprise mm-hmm. us because they're not being game planned for, and somebody might break through. But right now, you asking me, am I expecting that? No. Yeah, it's interesting because the offensive line and defensive line are so similar. Yes, right now. they're yes. so similar. It's very yes. good. Top five if they stay healthy. Now, let's get into this group. Mm-hmm. Very interesting group. Possible breakthrough player on this group. Mm-hmm. Um, Eagles linebackers. Um, listen, why should I care about linebackers if the Eagles don't? <laughs> yeah, so. They spent a third round pick last year. Everyone's buzzing about this pick. He's a great athlete. Everyone's saying he's all over the place. Listen. We're talking about uh, Davion. Listen, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. They, their track record is they don't value linebackers. I, I and it, So that's where I'm at with it. If, Since if, Jeff Lurie's been here, honestly. So, you know, if, if you're telling me, I'll listen to your opinion, but I'm telling you, I have no expectation for these linebackers. <laughs> Every time you get excited about a linebacker, you, you get your heart broke. So, since Carlos Emmons. <laughs> That's the last one. Los, Los was the know, last so one. So, I'll, I'll let you uh, have some uh, faith in the linebackers. <laughs> I mean, I'm seeing this. I haven't been an Eagles fan my whole life. Since <laughs> since Jeff Lurie's been here, since they were speaking the Midnight Green, since they've been wearing that Midnight Green, the linebackers, are just, it's a revolving door. And you see that, you know, a couple of the free agents they picked up, you know, it's one-year deals, you know. So how about this one? Uh, and this, I think this is where the most chatter comes from, the mm-hmm. Eagles secondary. Um, to me, you can talk about the rookie. You can talk about Nelson getting picked up in free agency. It all comes down to Slay. Can Slay be a lockdown corner 
and you know take the other team best receiver away. If, if Slay, I I think Slay would tell you he could have played better last year. Yeah, and probably with so much going on, I'm not even gonna hold it against him. Yeah, they treated, yeah. they were acting like he was Darrell Reeves. Yeah, if, if Slay, yeah, if Slay could be the Slay we saw in Detroit, then this this, this secondary will be good. Um, I like Nelson. I think that's a, he's he's a solid yeah, veteran. Solid. Um, I like kicking Maddox back into the inside. That's where he belongs. Um, I like the safeties. Um, I know uh, I think McLeod coming off the injury, so you know you got to cross the fingers with him. But if he can get back to his form, I like the secondary. Mm-hmm. If McLeod, I'm mean, sorry, if Slay is a, if Slay is a Pro Bowler, then look out. Yeah. Yes. And you know we were talking about um, off camera. Uh, Zach McPherson, he's getting a lot of buzz. <laughs> he's the camp darling right now on yeah. defense. Every year there's a camp darling. You're high on him. Fourth round pick. <laughs> yeah, so he's been everywhere. We want to just name drop him in there since everyone's, you know, been going crazy about him. So just name drop just in case he blows up. We did bring it up, you know. <laughs> so he's one to look for when you check out those preseason games starting next week, okay? So next week when we do the preseason and we uh, go over it, we'll break it down by quarter. Because there would be different units in each quarter, obviously. So okay. we'll, look, we'll focus on each unit that way. Quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Okay? No problem. Okay. All right. So wrapping things up, let's do closing thoughts for this week. Mm. Any closing thoughts? Anything that kind of stood out to you? I have a shout out. Mm. Um, so anything that just stood out to you you want to close with for this week? Um, I want to uh, piggyback off something I said earlier where to Sixer fans, take a breath. Relax. Let's watch this thing play out. Like I said, I don't think the Sixers missed out on anybody that was, you know, going to take you over the top. Let's see what happens with this Lillard thing, because the worst thing you can do is do something now and not be able to get Lillard later. So for me, it's Lillard or welcome back, Ben. Yeah. And for me, I, I'm going to kind of split it in half. I think right now with all Philadelphia teams, well, maybe the exception of the Phillies, it's really important for the fan base just to be patient. And that's the one thing that Philadelphia kind of struggles with. You know, we know why. And the Eagles need to start wearing their Kelly Green uniforms. So, and one last thing, I just found out, we're shooting this on a Thursday, one of my favorite wrestlers, beautiful Bobby Eaton of the Midnight Express, passed away. So I love wrestling, old wrestling, not this new garbage. So I'm a big wrestling fan, so I wanted to give him a shout-out for everything I heard. One of the nicest guys ever. And, you know, anytime we lose a lot of wrestlers. So I just wanted to give him a shout-out. So that's going to be it for this week. Shout-out Jada Kiss. Uh, Jada Kiss. <laughs> all right, we're going to talk about that off camera a little bit, all right? So thank you so much. Do not forget, follow us. We are on every social media platform at this point. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Getting a lot of lot of back and forth on Twitter now. Facebook, keep supporting us. Help us blow up. Help us get this thing going, okay? We're trying to do sports. We're trying to do it in a little different way. Fans' perspective, without all that emotion that you see. So stay with us, support us, and we will be back next week. Got tons of fun stuff planned for you. I'm Big Game Dame. This is my main man, Duke. Peace, and we'll see you.